Hey, good evening, everybody. How are you? Glad to see everybody here tonight. Thank you. Uh, for those who don't know, this is Rick on deck tonight. I'm I'm swinging at the ball. We'll see what happens. Glad to see everyone here. Thanks for shouting out, everybody. Appreciate that. So it's uh, Sunday night. We're we're heading into that last few days of July. Remember that May, you know, the some sort of Fed's rate change. That's the market will certainly. I think the market will certainly like that. History says it does. Okay, let's. Um, I've got some trades I want to look at tonight. Well, if we have time, we'll certainly take a peek at some of yours. But let's quickly run through the market. Uh, here, um, the spy. The spy ended up Friday uh, bullish, and it appears that we're still that way going into Sunday night, or at least certainly not bearish anyway. Um, nice little, nice little pop here uh, Friday. We also have a little J hook continuation setting up. J hook uh, continuation pattern for those that don't know is simply uh, a pattern that rallies up pulls back slightly and then uh, continues that rally again. Um, as I, as I, <clears throat> excuse me, excuse me, as I look at the daily here, I don't see too much in the daily that warrants any concern if we do start to see a sell-off uh, tomorrow or for that matter, um, I'll say early next week, you know, if, if, if price runs up, uh, runs up to here then our lines are certainly going to change but if we see a little little move uh early part of next week and then we start to sell off well i'd keep an eye right there about that 300 mark on the spy if we do fail that then i would suspect this uh 297 these lows in here uh get tested and that point i'm not going to be overly concerned but certainly have some concern a lot might depend on the on the uh the type of bearish candles we here have up here and maybe the volume now if we come into here and we start cracking at 297 and we end up closing below those lows right there then i think there's a very good chance we get down to this level right here that I don't think we're going to like too much. Um, that could lead to some downside. But that's, you know, there's just some some lines there if we do start to sell a, see a, a sell-off. Uh, let's take a look. Oh, and by the way, let's come over here real quick. You can see on the, uh, the orange line there, the 34 EMA, it's still rising. Nothing has broken. I don't think we're too far away from it to get too concerned right now. You know, maybe a little consolidation, but overall, I see uh, right now with the close Friday going into Sunday night. So far, I see everything pretty much uh, hanging in there. Let's take a T. Let's take a look at T twenty one twenty two. There we go. Whoops, boy. Let's try that again. Let me go up here to this chart. There we go. T twenty one twenty two. Um, we're we've we're, we're we're the dotted green line. We're headed back up here. Uh, the T line, that's the yellow line. You can put any line you want in there to kind of give yourself some depth in the chart. Maybe, I mean, see, we can change this to. I mean, heck, let's just change it for the to the 15 for no good reason. Uh, pick any number, and you can see that as long as we're above that move, whatever that moving average is, uh, it would, and we're still climbing. Uh, that would be a guideline. That's that's how I use that as this guideline. There there is one thing uh, on this T twenty, couple things on this T twenty one twenty two that maybe are a little bit questionable. And let's see here, we have this we we have this two. Okay, I can't use that color. Can't use that color. Okay, what's it doing to me here? All right. Let's just try a different game here. There we go. You see, we've got this this uh, top right here, and then we we came down, and you see, we made a lower high up into here. Well, 
we've come up here and we pulled back and we came back and we made a uh, double top in here. So as, as this starts to move up, let's see if I can use green. Yeah. See, if we start to move up, what we want to watch on this is, are we going to start failing in this area right here? And if we go across, you can see that there's uh, definitely some places uh, up there where it might, you know, we might want to watch that. So just keep an eye on that T2122. Uh, for those that don't have it, maybe your program, whatever program you use, I use TC2000, uh, the four-week new high-low ratio right there. Uh, right here it is. So it's just one thing, you know, I, I peek at that maybe a couple times a week, and that's one thing, um, one thing I look at there. So let's, let's go back to this chart right here, and then I want to look at the VIX real quick. Uh, if you look at, that's not the right one. There we go. If you look at the VIX, uh, the CBOE market volatility index, um, down here you can see that the the um, buyers of the VIX is not allowing the sellers to take control, and up here it just the opposite, not 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 the opposite, or it, it, just the opposite, um, and. Um, so with this kind of moving in here like that, I think what I would be cautious or cautious or, you know, jump aboard if you're if you're trading it. But the one thing we want if you're long this is is you want that that breakout. Uh, if you want the market to go up, then you're going to want to see this break down. Now, I don't think there's too much danger with the VIX being in here. Let's say if you're long the market long a lot of charts or any charts and I, I don't think there's too much danger in this area right here uh, it's if we break out that that is the that is the danger area that's that's where okay we better stand up and pay attention and of course if we break down it's just more uh, complacency in the VIX and, and it can go lower by the way it you know um, here's the weekly chart on the VIX and you can see we've been down here 11 bucks uh, so it, it could certainly go lower. Not that that's any kind of magic, any kind of magical line that would stop it. We could go even lower yet. Uh, it's all about watching that chart and just keeping an eye on it there. Uh, Mary T twenty one twenty two. If you have TC two thousand, just type it in and read about it. It's uh, you know it, it it tells you what it is. Four week new high low ratio is, is what it is. Um, the best information you can find on it is go to TC2000, uh, go to the website, and read up on it. They can tell you more than I can tell you here uh, for this evening. Uh, again, it's just a four-week new high-low ratio. You know, how many stocks are making new highs? A percentage of new stocks making new highs versus new lows. Uh, that's what it is there. Um, uh Hang on there, Russell. Let me get through some of these, and then we'll, I'll definitely take a peek at your your stocks there. Um, IYT, I think IYT is kind of important to keep an eye on. Um, IYT, it's got a nice wedge here, and it's trying to break out. Uh, it is trying. Trying is probably the key word. Um, just take a look at the weekly chart. And if you look at the weekly chart, and this is one of those that... I, you know, I have mixed emotions on, um, it, 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 when we're looking at charts and when we're looking at candlesticks, it's all about stacking. Um, if you're bullish, it, it's all about candlestick stacking, you know, stack, 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 stack. Uh, you can have, you can have one or two out of place, three out of place, but we look for that overall stacking. It's kind of like dancing three steps this way one step this way or something like that. But ultimately, we want to keep that going up. When we run into um, resistance or we start stepping on each other's feet while we're dancing, that's when the problem comes. problems come in. And if we look at this weekly chart, and I'm just, you know, I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not trying to paint any kind of bearish picture or anything at all. I'm just looking at this bearish chart and I, and I see there, there's a bit of resistance in here, a pretty good bit, actually. And, 
you know, resistance is not about some tiny little, oop, there it is right there, you know, one thin little line. Resistance is about a whole area. And, I mean, I can even climb up into here. Um, I mean, it, right now it looks like there's more room to move up. There's, there's uh, nothing about Friday's candle that would necessarily... Uh, there we go. Friday's candle that would necessarily suggest there's any kind of selling. But you can clearly see there's a little bit of resistance there. Resistance for me is not necessarily a big deal. Um, you know, if resistance was so scary and, and, and frightening and uh, uh, it always won, well, there'd be no stock market. Everything would never, nothing would go up. It would hit resistance and it would die. It would just hang itself right there. Uh, but that's not the case. Well, we just look at these charts when you know to help us figure out the best time to make a trade. Most of us are uh, are short term traders, so we look at charts like this to kind of help us. You know, are we are we running into a little bit of trouble or a little bit of pause? Um, you know, things like that. And you, and you know, John, right now I like it for a, for a move up too. Uh, I look at price action and I look at this price action. I see. I, I mean, let's take that upper line. I don't see a problem. I really don't. All I'm saying is, as we as we look at this, just just take in consideration that there. Uh, let's see, go back to that weekly. There we go. Just take in consideration that there is. Uh, we've been here before, and overall, it didn't really like it. Uh, basically, what happened is there we are, and down we went. There we are again. Down we went. Well, here we are again. The question is, what's going to happen? And it's all about follow through. It's all about stacking. But I agree with you. Right now, I'm still uh, bullish on the chart as well. Uh, SMH, if I'm going to look at IYT, I have to look at SMH. And SMH is rocking away. This is the weekly chart. Here's a daily chart. SMA is suggesting that we have a bit more of a pullback. Uh, I do think a little bit more of a pullback is coming. Um, you know, we have some support over here in this area. And then, of course, well, I'm just going to go with that. I'm going to go with right here. Just put it right in here. We'll give it a little bit of room over here. Give it to the 117.60 area, 117.50. We'll see what that looks like. Uh, but right now, I think SMH is giving us a, just a tad, tad of uh, pullback there. Okay, so that's a little bit of on the market here. Um, I've got a few charts, uh, like the email said, that went out, like we do on Sunday night. You know, we try to give 10 trades. So I've got some longs and I've got some shorts. I'll try to zing through those pretty fast. And then we'll certainly look at a few that uh, anyone would like me to take a look at. Uh, TMUS, um, I'll point out earnings. Some of the ones I have has earnings. Well, I think one has earnings tomorrow or the next day. A couple has earnings a few days from now. Make sure, please make sure you check earnings. Um, some people don't care about the earnings, and some people only care when they're in a trade and it has earnings and there's a problem. You decide whether you want to trade earnings. That, that's what it comes down to. Are you going to trade earnings or are you not? So TMUS, I think, I think there's plenty of time ahead of earnings here. We have a nice little breakout, a very nice little breakout here. And what I would be looking for is a little pullback. Um, one of those chart patterns, like that, like that J-hook continuation pattern, uh, something like that. So if this is your run, and, and I'm not saying it's going to pull back tomorrow at all. It can still climb higher. Uh, watch for that pullback, and then we're going to watch for that turn and look for an entry. A good example of where that might be would be, since this had a gap, we're just going to skip that because nothing right there is suggested to buy it. So let's just run right up here. Let's pull back. And you can see you have one, two, three, four bottoms. And you have a hammer in here. We did gap up. We just broke out. That would be a good place to buy. Or if you're a buyer of dark candles, typically I'm not. Uh, that could have been a buy right there. And early, early on could have been buy, And you could have been green on that money right there. Just a second. I need to fix something here do, 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 do. there we go oh one second I gotta load this program up all right there we are up and running um, 
Another one is PAGS, PAGS. Uh, that has earnings on the 15th, earnings on the 15th. You can see the nice trend. T-line bands are still showing a trend. We've got a nice little pullback here. Uh, a pullback and it's after that run um, let's clean that up and let's just put it down here so we can see the candles there we go so you can see how we've made a low and we made a higher low and we're setting up um, a candle pattern here uh, popping up and if we start to break out that's what I would look at for a long so on positive trading up boom something like that certainly can be bought on that breakout or that pullback um, so there's uh, let's see PAGS so let's go do a short because I'm we'll just kind of do a little mix up here uh, here's RB I'm sorry this is just my RBB chart but it's the only chart I really have that is set up this way uh, this is a blue ice failure we did gap up we've consolidated and what we would want to see, if you're bullish, what we would want to see after a gap up is we're, we're good with consolidation. No, no problem with that. No problem at all. But uh, what we're wanting is for this price to go the other way. And you can see here that price has slowly just, just dwindled lower. And then what it did is it drew that 34 EMA below the 50 here. Price tried to rally up, and it appears that it's failing right now. Now, on weakness, especially if we get below that low right here, then I think the likely target is somewhere between or somewhere around those two red lines uh, down there. Uh, so on weakness here, that starts to falter a little bit. We might pull back uh, into this area here, which is, you know, 12% move. That's that's not a bad move on the stock on the stock. On on the option, it might be a great deal more uh, if somebody's trading an option. Now here's another one. Uh, EQIX. EQIX. Uh, th this is what we're wanting. I mean, this is this is a bullish chart when we when we just continue to rally up. And notice the 34 is rising. 34 continues to rise. Boom, 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 boom. Price continues to rise. And then all of a sudden, price starts to fall. And as it starts falling, a few more days go by. You can almost see that 34. Let me make that bigger. There we go. You can almost see how that 34 is starting to, well, bend over. And price now is below that 50-day simple. So if we start to rally up, if we rally up and we start to put a sell signal in here, we come back below that low, um, again, I'm, I'm thinking that somewhere in that area would be the target side. Now, I, I said below that low. You know, there, there's all kinds of traders. There's Malcolm, there's Bob, there's Aaron, there's Tcon, Happy Gill. Those are the only ones I can see on the chart or on the camera there. So everybody's a little different. You know, you're going to get traders that, that you know, you're going to, you, if you're, let's just say this is a for sure short. You know, if it rallies up, you're going to short it here. Some people are going to short it in here. Some people are going to short it here. Some people are going to short it here. Where's the best place to short it? Where you think it's the best place to short it. I, you know, there's 101 answers for that question. Where's the best place? Well, the sort of the nickel answer, I guess, the best place would be at the very high. That would be the best place now, wouldn't it? The truth of it is, I would bet dollars to donuts that... I mean, if, if anything, a couple of people at best maybe shorted it right here. Um, that's just not typically what happens. Um, you know, everyone, they, we, we, we want to see a, a drawdown. We want to see a lift up, and then we want to see that, that failure. Well, that's what I'm saying. If it licks, lifts up and then we start to see that failure, well, that just might be a place to short it. But as you look at the chart, if if everybody can see in hindsight where the best place is to short it, why doesn't everybody short it there? I don't even have an answer for that because I really hope nobody ever asks that question. Because we did, we can't. We don't. You know, hundreds and thousands of traders out there. Are you thinking everybody's going to short at the same time? Go long at the same time? It's not going to happen. So there are shorters here, 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 here. 
they'll be shorting people as it go, goes up. If it goes up, there'll be people shorting. If it goes up again, people will be shorting it. Up again, people are shorting it. We start to see a sell signal. People will start to short it. People will short it. People short it. People short it. So the thing of it is, you got to have charts like this on your watch list ready to go. Can't necessarily go out and and always be looking for the boom, 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 boom trade. You know, the instant trade. Set up a watch list. Make a plan. Trade your watch list. Trade your plan. All right. I'll try not to dwell on that too much. Uh, let's, let's see. That was, what, four? Let's look at TRI for a long. TRI for a long. So here TRI is broken out after a nice little trend. Nice trend. Look at that trend. Look at the 34 just continues to rise up. You see price continues to rise up really until it gets to about right there. When it gets to right here, you can see that this thing just pretty much goes sideways. Pretty much a sideways move there. And then we break out. We break out with a little morning star type signal. So what I would look for on this, and by the way, for me, anything uh, above the morning star signal, which would be this candle right here, anything above 68, 30, 35 there is, uh, I would consider bullish. Now I want to caution everybody. Bullish does not mean buyable. Buyable is like right now, sort of. Bullish just means it's a bullish chart. Simple. So for a buy, what I like to see is I like to feel that I'm getting a bargain. Uh, I think that's just, I, I, I mean, I think that's human nature. There's nothing wrong with that. Uh, so for me, I would like to see an inside day. Inside day is just simply a candle that uh, can buy inside of the breakout candle. And then I'll end up using you know, a stop down in here, something like that right there. So now exactly where that buy is, you know what? I Look, if, if you can buy it at, at, here, let's do this. I mean, if you can buy it uh, at the low, uh, great for you, 68.81. Uh, trying to call where that low, where the buy is, that, that's, that's an uh, insane trader's way of trading, in my opinion. Uh, you're trying to buy an area, not an exact price. Um, so my idea would be to buy in this area, my stop uh, about that 67. And then ultimately we wanted to continue up, uh, in a nice little manner that it's been doing just like that right there. Same, same type of chart. And then it'll do the same old thing that it's been doing. Uh, same old price action up, back, up, back, except this time we don't want it to go sideways. We want it to continue up. All right, let's come in here and look at another short real quick. Here's EME earnings on the 30th. So coming up on Tuesday, be careful. If you don't ever like to trade earnings, probably just stay away from this one. You can see the nice trend move up. We come up here and put a hangman type candle in there, which right, you know, this, the, the follow through, uh, scary, yes, no, we did have a wick up there, but you know, the reality is to call that top would be sort of, you know, if somebody could do that 10 times in a row, you would have my attention. But if you call a top, you know, 382 times and you get it right once, I don't want to hear from you kind of a thing. Um, the problem is we gap down the, the following day. There you go. That might be a problem. That might be the chart we want to look at for sure. We have a bearish engulf. This is exactly what I'm talking about that rallies up and fails. Now, this happened to fail with a gap down. Just a little bear flag there. So we gap down, and now we're popping up back to that 50-day simple moving average. So the question we've got to ask ourselves is, are we starting a trend down? Did we move down and rally up, and is that going to fail? And this is where... We, you know, failure below that low would suggest that, to me, would suggest that these two areas are the next target area. It would, it would suggest that, that uh, the sellers are outnumbering the buyers. Um, and uh, um, 
and of course there's going to be by i need you know what i need to do is make that smaller there we go you know and of course there's going to be sellers that might take advantage of this uh inside day here or i'm sorry just inside those those two lines now if this starts to break out and we close above those highs well let me let me get rid of all that little little congested there let's put this back up there so here we're up and here we're down so if we close up and this is clearly the top for the last few days so if we break out here what we have to be careful of this is charting 101 uh, low high high or low and if we break out and if we can stay or if we can prove if, if the chart can prove to us they can hold here in other words it either continue or a pullback and find support at that level well that just might be the sign of a long chart so you know if you do end up shorting that just make sure that you, you don't hang with it if it starts putting in a bullish chart pattern remember a bearish chart pattern is just the opposite we're looking at a high a low a lower high a lower low and see this is this is doing exactly that right now that's what we've got trend to the downside uh we'll do i think one more long uh microsoft let's do microsoft look at that microsoft by the way i think goes higher period now i don't necessarily mean to say and i'm, I'm not saying this got nothing to do with necessary i'm not i'm not saying it goes higher tomorrow i'm not saying it go higher next week i think overall microsoft is a pretty nice chart i think it's a pretty nice company i do there i think they're doing a lot of right stuff so overall i think microsoft goes higher therefore it's one of those charts that i have on the watch list a lot of people here are trading it. a lot of members here are trading it and you know take advantage of those dips those little pullbacks uh, look looking for a sign of buyer stepping in so you can buy so you might want to step in as well so overall i think microsoft is a top notch uh doing very well uh trade there um we'll do one more coke let's do coke uh I, now i'm long coke uh currently up 24 percent on coke um and here here's that chart pattern we're looking for let me just let me go to a naked chart look at that so uh let's see here blue there we go so here's uh a nice little breakout kind of a crooked line wasn't it let's try that again let's do a straight line there we go so now we have a breakout here uh popped up we come we've come back and tested and then we started showing some strength friday started showing some strength friday uh, and nothing says that it's not going to come back a little bit and maybe test again you know just because you have a bullish candle doesn't mean that it's a rocket ship to the upside this is why we always say you know don't 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 hang your hat on the hard right edge don't you know don't don't live and die uh, by that sword right there um think about what the what the chart is doing think about what the trade is doing and if you go back and look at you know if, if you look if you look at coke here and you know you you draw a line like this right here just across those bottoms if you draw a line in those bottoms somebody might say man i wish i would have bought coke back here in march well you could have uh, and maybe you did uh the, the thing about it is a lot of times what happens is we hang our head hat on you know that hard right edge and it scares us uh you know we see something like that and it scares us so if you're looking for that longer trade a little different than uh, short-term trade you know maybe candles like that they scare you when actually the trend is still working so the point i'm trying to make here is look look I, i'm long this i didn't sell it friday had a good percentage in it uh, it could certainly pull back uh, but that's i'm willing to accept that looking for some higher moves here so okay i'm going to try to go up here and catch up to a few uh you know what I, if i don't even know where to begin um 
If anyone typed in a chart, if you could just type it in right now, if you want to take a look at it. There you go, D DVN, that's where we start. I I've got no idea where to start up there. So DVN, um, I'm going to go to the channels. Uh, DVN here, uh, at this point for me, and by the way, just stop, everybody hang on, hang on, don't type anymore. Stop, 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 stop. Please declare whether you're looking at it long or short, okay? Just like, like I'll just pick on AA because it's the last one. AA long or AA short, something like that. that. That's very helpful. Thanks. All right, let's go back and, and look at DVN here. Uh, DVN. Uh, right now, DVN is still in a downtrend. Uh, that, that's still trending down. I, I don't know that I see a long trade on here. Uh, so I'm going to assume you're looking at a short on this. And on weakness, I, I can see where that could peel back a little bit and then come back and look at those lows. Uh, for a long, I think this would have to uh, show some buyers, which I don't think it necessarily does that right now. Uh, but we'd have to see buyers. And if we go back to that, that uh, trading 101, and, and this is really trading 101. I mean, this, this is it, all right? The first day of, of trading class, we, you, you, know, you learn about a low, a high, a higher low, or double bottom. And it's a buy when it breaks out. Otherwise, you don't have a trend. Um, and hang with the trend. Uh, the, you you want to make some money in stock trading, figure out how to see a trend. And if you don't know how to see a trend, uh, both myself hit, here at Hit Run Candlesticks and Doug with Right Way Options, uh, every day we talk about trends. And if you need help, you know, come on in the trading room. We talk about trends all the time. Ask the question. We'll certainly, certainly help out. So DVN right now, uh, to me, does not look like a long, looks more like a short than anything. Uh, JD. JD is still trending up. Maybe part of that, just a normal little pullback. JD is a chart we talked about uh, last week a couple of times. And I pointed out this tweezer top. Be a little cautious with JD. Now, overall, I, I like the JD chart. I mean, I do. We're still trending up. Life is good. Everything is working. We're making higher lows and higher highs. Um, and just because we broke out bullishly does not mean that we negated that, that tweezer top. Remember that candlestick signals have no need to produce what they're telling you the very next day. They don't have to do that. They, they could be giving you a clue and then three or four days later or five, six days later or even 10 days later, it could, it could actually change its game. So right now I look at JD. I am bullish. I am bullish JD, absolutely. I don't think it's a buy based on yes, Friday's candle. However, if we move back into trend and we start to see some bulls step in, what do I mean by bull step in? There's a hammer and there's follow through. Here's a hammer and there's a move up. That's what I mean by bull stepping in. Uh, if you're a bottom picker trying to pick the bottom, you're in the wrong place. I can just say that. I'm not, not, not for the person that put HJD out there. I'm just saying, if you're a bottom picker, you're in the wrong place. We don't, we don't bottom pick. We don't do that. Try not to do that. <laughs> ACN. ACN. ACN is one of those charts that I think is not only bullish, I think it's magnificently bullish. <laughs> um, talking about a bullish continuation pattern, um, it would sadden me greatly, and I'm not in this, it would sadden me greatly if that did not show us some higher prices. Now, again, I want to remind everybody, and, I, and I'm, I'm trying to remind everybody because it, it is amazing how I, I get this type of question or hear from people um, and they don't get it that charts have pullbacks. You know, you look, you look at JD and how would you like to be in that chart? Everybody says yes, but not everybody, not everybody can handle 
this sort of thing. Well, here's a news flash. All charts. There are no exceptions. Zero. Butkus. Zip. Nada. There are no exceptions to this. The most bullish chart in the world, if you found it, would have these type of pullbacks. And these are buying opportunities. This pullback here is a buying opportunity. Now, I'm not saying that because we're not bottom pickers, so we're not trying to pick bottoms. I'm not saying that's the opportunity. I'm saying that's the clue that says the bulls are stepping in and the opportunity could be on that follow through or even that breakout. So as we look at this chart, like I said, I would be sorely disappointed that in say two weeks time, maybe or four weeks time price uh, does not move higher. Now we could certainly consolidate hold into trend there and then move up and that may take several days but i will be sorely disappointed nice chart by the way here on the acn uh some sum some try that again sum there we go some consolidating nicely that's a nice chart there look at that weekly holy moly uh this is a weekly chart i did change that we'll come back to a daily but look how that thing is working there, working out nice. Nice little pop to the upside. We broke out of those uh, highs right in here, and now we're pulling back testing with some very small candles. That's nice. I like that. And we come back over to the daily chart, and you can see that we've pulled back to the lower band line. So now we're in opportunity area. We're in opportunity area here. Uh, the uh, anything below that low would tell us that our chart is not working the way we want it. So we might want to reconsider that trade. On the other hand, if we stay above that low, then that would be a long chart. Let's draw a line from here to this top right there and extend it down. And you can see that we're just butting right up against that line. We start to see a little bullishness. That looks like a pretty nice long trade. Earnings 8-1, so just a couple days away. Be careful. All righty here. Netflix. Everybody's favorite. <coughs> Excuse me. I had to clear my throat. <coughs> um, so Netflix, you know, before Netflix can make, before next net before Netflix can get up here, it's going to have to get through all of this right here. So right now Netflix found a bottom. It's rallied up three monstrous days, uh, parabolic, boom boom boom, just like that. And you can see now we're approaching a little bit of resistance right here. So if you're looking at long uh, Netflix, well. This is where I would probably be a little cautious. If you're looking at short, wait for the sell signal in Netflix. Fake meat. That's what the ticker symbol should be. Fake meat. Um, little uh, doji up here. Hangman type candle up here. Uh, remember, it's, it's all about stacking. That's it, it, what candlesticks are. They're, they're all about stacking. Uh, I'm going to put a line right here for support right in here actually I usually go a little below so we'll put it right here I match it up with that high come through that candle that looks pretty fair we've been up one two three four days one two three four days yeah so with four days being up um, you know you're 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 ripe and prime for some consolidation that it, that does not mean that it can't go higher I know going into the close Friday if I was long this chart I'd be pretty nervous of that candle myself. Uh, keep in mind, we're, we're uh, you know, hit run candlesticks is about some short term trading. When I say short term trading, uh, anything overnight to even 30 days. So it's not like it's, it's not day trading, it's not buy today, sell tomorrow. Um, but what we want to do is we want to take advantage of the swings. And that's what we've got here. We've got a nice pop out of the box chart pattern right here, right? there and we did what the pop out of the box is supposed to do it popped out it ran us up we want to be thinking about profits let it pull back 
for another opportunity. If you're looking for the long-term trade, stay with it. Because the truth of it is, this isn't really bearish until we start cracking down uh, into this area right here. Below that red line, I would look at something to the bearish side. What else do we have here? IBM. IBM, there we go. IBM is a bull chart to me until it's not. So, we've got a nice break to the upside. I don't particularly like those wicks up there. But there's a lot of things I don't like but they work out. So as I look at IBM, it's a matter of if it does this or if it does that. So as we move sideways inside this area here, I would be long the chart, pop up, nice breakout. Um, that is what I would call a good chart pattern, except for those two wicks up there. Uh, but that doesn't mean they have to produce. If we start to see a breakout, excuse me, if we start to see a breakout, and we success, we have success with a test, that could lead us right up. If we start to see weakness, and the weakness comes out below that low right there, then that would suggest we're going to run down to one of those two lines. That's just the way it's going to happen. Um, now the question is, will a buyer step in at those areas and, areas and take advantage of the pullback? So long as we stay inside that box, I would re I will remain bullish. Um, some people are buying in here or wait for that breakout. Baba. My long Baba? I know I was last week. I am not long Baba. Um, so Bob is consolidating very nice. My next target to the upside is about 185.55. Uh, if we start to see weakness, Watch that lower red line. That might produce um, an opportunity only if you see buyers stepping in. So if we see it pull back here, uh, you can see the chart is still trending. Everything is everything is working on the, on the chart uh, as far as the trend goes. That's working out nice. So if we do pull back, um, if we do pull back and we get into that trend and we start to see buyers, that might be another opportunity. Here is something about tops. So we have a top over here, and then we actually have a top over here. Now, this one broke out. Well, I guess that wasn't. It came close, but we'll call it close. So what we'll do is put a little arrow. Um, and then we broke out, which this is. This may be more of the top into this this whatever date that is july early july late june candle over here when when we see a chart that goes up and let's do it this way let's try to stay with that it goes up and it fails and then it pulls back and then it goes up again and it fails that's the second time if what, what you'll find is it's kind of common to see that second failure, kind of common. If it pulls back that third time and it holds the trend, I'm watching Baba. That's where I'll start to look to buy it. I'm not in it. I was last week, uh, sold it. I forget which day it was. Um, and But if it starts to show me some buyers in here, well, that's where I'll look for that opportunity. And that would be that third time and sometimes that third time is the trick. And then, boom, right in there. So anyway, that's kind of my plan with Baba right now, just sitting and watching it. It does look bullish. This looks like a bullish chart. Uh, in hindsight, I may, you know, we might get up tomorrow morning and get our computers turned on. And I might, you might hear me say, darn it, should have bought or kept Baba. Uh, so right now I'm bullish on Baba, but it's going to have to show me some follow through. Let's see, AA, 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 AA is just moving sideways to be long above that 2373. Aggressive traders, you know, there's your possible buying opportunity right here. Um, so here's our low, there's our high. We pulled back, and you, you actually have, you know, several bars in there that's showing us the buyers are holding it up. Sellers aren't strong enough to take it down. Little... Kind of a spinning top, Hiromi candle, uh, Friday. 
Uh, I, I get it if somebody's buying it. You know, not a lick of money is going to be made till it actually breaks out. So I, I get it for the early buys in here. It looks, totally makes sense to me. But on that breakout, you're, all, you're going to see a test. And the nice thing about AA here, if it starts to break out, there are uh, some pretty good targets up here for this thing uh, to move up. So like that. Let's look at the weekly. There's there. Well, let's just get that right up there to start with. Uh, so let's let's actually get rid of everything. Put one. There you go. Right there. So on that breakout, you can see how that could move back up and test that high. Keep in mind, it's going to do it the way charts do it. So it'll be like that. It's not going to be in a straight line. Uh, but I would look at that 31 on that breakout. That nice looking. Nice looking chart, actually. Let's see. IBM, we already did that. Cliff, thank you. Longs. Cliff, 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 Cliff. Um, hmm. uh, I, I think the big thing on, on Cliff now is show us some follow through earnings, plenty far away. So we're good with that. Um, here we've got, um, you know. We're right at an area where it seems like it wants to just kind of give up. On the other hand, we are starting to work the whole higher low thing working in here. Uh, so the big key uh, for Cliff would be a breakout and a test. You can see that we're off that trend line a little bit. So anytime we're off that trend line, there's always that chance that it wants to move back into that trend a little bit. Here, how many people, I'm not looking for an answer. I don't want everyone answering. Um, but how many times have you bought a chart? And let's, let's do this. Let's put this line up. Permanent. There we go. So how many times have you bought a chart uh, like this right here? Keep in mind, we're pulled off the trend line. And, you know, you're ready to go on it. You pull the trigger, you buy it. And then this always happens. You know, it pulls back on you. And then what happens, you know, let's, let's do this. It, it pulls back, and somewhere along the line, it might give you a candle that just flat makes you nervous. It's like, okay, I can handle pullback, but I can't handle that candle. So then what it does is it continues to pull back. It gets into that trend right there. And it starts touching that trend line, finding support, finding buyers, and then it moves up. And then it breaks out. So here you are, paid up here for it, sold it down here, and it moves up. And you're just wondering, why can't I figure this game out? What is it with this game? And I just realized I'm looking at the weekly chart too. I'll go to the daily. Um, the thing about the game is buy close to the trend line. Buy close to the trend line. That's that's the trick with the game right there. Um, and And... That kind of helps. It's not going to solve the problem because what if what if uh, what if uh, C CLF gets over here? Uh, we get down in there. You you start to you know you see some buyers. You buy into it, and then all of a sudden it breaks below that trend line. Well, what you've done is you've lowered your risk because below the trend line should be kind of a no-brainer. You know, step out of it until it gets back above that trend line uh, right there. So it lowers your risk. Uh, rather than up here buying it, then you draw the trend line. Um, you accept the pullback because you put the, let's change those colors. You accept the pullback because after you bought it, you draw the trend line. Oh yeah, 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 okay. And no one, everyone hates to lose money. Guys, we're the worst, okay? I, I know how it works. We hate to lose money. So we don't sell it. Uh, then we get that candle that just, all right, we can't handle that. Uh, it, it comes down a little bit more. So what happens now, you bought it here. Now your risk is all of that. And it will be this too because it's just the way we are. So anyway, back to the daily. Uh, we're in the T-line bands here. T-line bends to me is always an opportunity. We have a gap down. That makes me a little bit nervous. It makes me want to say, I'll be a buyer above 11 bucks. Get above the gap. Get above those lows. 
we look at that chart, we look, saw the weekly chart, it does not change that there's a bit of resistance right here. Um, does not change that at all. But the trend and the trend to me is number one, price action trend, uh, they're both number one. Uh, so as long as we show strength over 11 bucks, I can see that as a trade. These tops do make me a little bit nervous on the daily chart. And then we see, we already talked about Netflix. I can't remember if we talked about some. Uh, we did talk about some already. Bo, 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 bo. We already did that, did that, did that, did that, did that. Disney. Disney here. Disney I would have to put on the long list. On the long list. Um, here we've rallied up. We've moved away from trend. And, and here, let's get rid of that line. Just looking at the T-bands here, they act as a trend. Um, they don't pinpoint the top because they're they're on the charts permanently. They they follow price, the averages. They don't draw lines from the lows uh, like that. Um, but you can see that they're trending up. We had a top with a hangman follow through. We pulled back to that red line in the 34 happens to be there, and then buyers started stepping in. Uh, the big key now is to break out of this top right here. That's that's the big key. We break out, then I would look for that retest, um, so breakout test. That would be a bullish chart. And right now, I have to put this on the bullish chart just because we're continuing to move up. The whole trend is moving up. The 34 is rising. The 50 is still rising, and the T-bands are rising as well. CGC for a short. Uh, let's get rid of all that. I'm going to look at the weekly chart. Um, yeah. Yeah, I would I would uh, look at that as a short weekly chart is showing us a downtrend, um, bear flag building here. Here's the daily. Nothing about the daily suggests that we're long. Um, and here's what would have. Uh, let's go to a real clean chart. Here's where maybe CGC would have been to the long side. We have a low, high, higher low. So let's put the line right there where the high is. So we got we got we got that bullish candle. That's the candle that says, "Okay, pay attention." Uh, if you're using the LTA scanner, um, you know this would show up down here if you had it on your watch list, or you know if you're watching the scanner, you're seeing uh, charts go by. Uh, you see that you put that on your uh, you'd start looking at it. The thing of it is, it wouldn't be a buy till it actually broke out, and that would be that low, the high, the higher low. And we need a higher high. So really right now, even right now, like, you know, candlesticks do not have to produce right away. So even if we broke out, that's where I would looking at being long. But we're looking at this short right now. So anything below that top, I would look at this short. The trend is still to the downside. Thank you for that one, Tom. T. T. Gwen, how you doing, Gwen? L X X L. Try that again. X L N X. There we go. Um, ugly bearish candle. Yes, engulfing, uh, engulfing. Yes, overreaction to earnings. Could be. Um, I, honestly, Gwen, I, you know, I don't have an answer for that. Um, I, I don't know if it was an uh, uh, over exaggeration. Um, overreaction on earnings. What we want to do is follow the chart. So here we've been trending up. And let's just put a line up there. And if we connect, you know, the first, the first couple, you can see that we're way off trend. We're way, 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 way off trend. So this could be just simply a pullback into that trend area. That's all it could be. Uh, if we look at some longer term channels, um, you see those channels have not turned around yet. And let's go look at the short term channels. We're pulling right down into that red line. We could start now. I don't think, you know, I don't think it's just some big turnaround tomorrow, but we could start to turn around. Um, and even, you know, by you putting this out there, it makes me kind of think, well, you're kind of looking at this. Hey, it's maybe an overreaction. Maybe it is. Maybe it isn't. I don't know. But all the answers to all the questions are in the charts. 
all the answers. Can anyone name name the tune that that comes from? Um, all the, let's see, all the, all the answers, all the questions. I'll tell you what, anybody, can anyone name, 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 well, no, you can Google it, so that's too easy nowadays. So here we, we, we move up, uh, we pull back. What we want to see is buyers start stepping in. We want to see those candles get a little smaller. Uh, they certainly may continue to pull back, but we want to see those candles get smaller, and we want to see those buyers step in and, you know, something like that. That would be the opportunity right in there. Thanks for pointing that one out because I'm going to keep that one on my watch list. Thanks. Mitch Long. Jeez, why didn't... MTCH, there we go. I hit the wrong keys. So Mitch Long, you can see the trend is up. The T-bands are moving up. We have broken out, and right now we're still in test mode. So for that reason, I would say I'm very bullish on this chart. It still looks good. Um... Ultimately, you need that breakout. Not a lick of money will be made until it actually breaks out. This is all uh, carnival peanut money in here. Uh, the money is made on that breakout. I can see trying to start a position in this area below 74. Uh, I don't, I, I would question whether I want to be in that chart below 74. Let's see here. Uh, T con T con you wrote or is it been beaten up? Unfortunately, unless you put a ticker symbol in there, there's no way for me to catch up and guess on that. Um, let's see Starbucks long Starbucks most ex um, I'll say yes. Uh, I'll, I'll say yes. I don't know what your trade plan is on this. I really don't. Um, we gapped up. Uh, yeah, I, right now I would think it's long. I certainly wouldn't want to have been a buyer Friday. Heavens no. I think that's too much risk. Um, support is way down here. So I think there's too much risk of, um, uh, of a pullback. So, but let's go back long. I'm going to say yes. Why? Because it's trending up, but it doesn't mean it's a buy right now Walt um, way too far away from the trend area uh, when a stock gaps up one thing I like to do is I'll put a line underneath that low um, and then it gaps up great not interested in buying it because there's too much risk of pullback but on the other hand if we start seeing buyers step into this and it, you know if we see you know, candles that suggest that this is actually going to act as support and then we start moving up, then yes, absolutely. That might be a buying scenario. But overall, long Starbucks, sure, why not? Still trending. LDOS, LDOS, nice, nice charts. See how we gave us a little sell signal in here and then we had some follow through. We came back, and now we're starting up. That's a pretty nice chart. Now, I do think that we may be in for a little consolidation, but overall, I think that's a, a bullish chart, it looks like. Uh, wins earnings day after tomorrow. So for that reason, I would stay clear, but that's just me. Um, and again, this is one of those that, uh, you, you know, when, when we look at a chart, uh, Thanks for pointing this out, Dolores. When we look at a chart, always ask yourself a couple of questions. Always ask yourself, what can it do for you? What can it do for you? Um, and can I afford the loss? Ask yourself those two questions. So the truth of it is, that's all it can do for me. That's it. It can't do any more than that until price gets above that line. We're too close. Now, Let's let's look at this a little differently. What if you bought it down here? Now there's some money there. Now there's some money there. So I, you know, somebody could make an argument that hey, that can make me some money. Now the stock, not a lot of money in the stock move here, but the options move. There, there's, you know, some money there. But by buying it here, 
ask yourself, what can I do for you? That's all I can do. There's no money in that chart until it breaks out. And then when you, everyone's stop might be a little bit different, but if you just, if you just use that pivot low, you've got to look at this and say, well, my profit is less than a percent. What can I do for me? And my risk is 3.4%. Now you may put your stop in higher, but I'm just looking at the pivot low and what can it do for me? So truthfully with LD, and I like this chart. I, I like this chart. It doesn't mean it's a buy right now. Uh, but on a breakout, successful test. And by the way, that would be my test area down here at uh, 82. So a success on breaking out and then testing back down here. I think you may certainly have something in that chart. We're only going to have time for a couple of more. And then I need to go. XATA. XAT. Is that right? A. Let's see. AXTA. Um Okay, AXT moving side moving sideways. I, I think because we have this big wick right here, and let's put a line right there. And this was the chance to make a statement. All right, that was a chance to make a statement, but that was sure short lived. Um, so I I think we want to make darn sure that this thing is actually going to move higher. I, I guess therefore what I'm saying is I I would probably you know, I would probably look for a breakout, a good solid move. And it may be a couple of days. Uh, it, may, it may take, you know, two days or three days to make that solid move. Uh, but with that wick right there, I would just have a little caution. Over, overall, we're consolidating very nice. Um, I like the way the chart is setting up as far as the lows go. Just that wick, one one little wick right there. Um, I, like I said, I just, just need that little little move to the upside. Where are we? MTD. How come? I don't know what I'm doing. Uh, MTD. Uh, if you're long, uh, I can certainly see staying long. Put a line about halfway that candle below that. Um, that kind of would suggest that we're going to come back and test that area right there. And that puts us down uh, between the blue and the red line. The last thing you want is this thing to actually start closing uh, below that red line. We don't want we don't want that to happen. That that can be a game changer. So uh, one hundred one fifty stop. You're long and stay long. If you're looking to get long, you know anything above that line. I I like the chart. Nice trend up. Thirty four is trending. The T bands are trending. Looks good. Um, you just need to make sure that. And, and, and probably my biggest thing on this would be that stop. Pretty tight stop, really. Uh, yeah, that's a pretty tight stop. But with this candle, that's a dark cloud cover. And and uh, another thing, too, is with, with, with this cl dark cloud cover, if you'll take a look at this, there's, see that volume there? That volume kind of, kind of, kind of poked out of that red line. Um, that sort of makes me want to be a little concerned. So as we move up, I just want to make sure that we negate that candle. We've negated it, but we haven't had a real decent test, and I don't think this is a decent test yet. Uh, I really don't. So let's see what the doji does tomorrow. The doji might really tell a big story, and uh, that's where I would put the lines right there. Bottom, and we break out of the body of the doji. I can see that being long. Uh, let's see, Aaron is long JD. Yeah, we've talked, we just talked about that. Uh, guess not in room one. No, we're in room two. Let's see, S, uh, CTL, Macy's. Uh, Macy's is looking pretty good. I kind of like Macy's. Um, nice, let's see, that's an RBB setup. Um, 34 is above the 50. The 34 is trending up. 50 has just started to move up a little bit. We've tested the dot deuce, nice little pullback. Like I say, I'm 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 liking that chart. Um, uh, kind of bullish on that. Uh, that looks pretty good. Uh, I personally, I'm in KSS. I bought KSS um, Friday. Did I buy it Friday? I think. Uh, so nice little round. I, I'm just in the same world, Coles and Macy's. 
Uh, same type of RVB setup uh, along that. But Macy's, uh, nice pop to the upside. So far, I think we have a good pullback. And the pullback so far is testing support. And I would call that, so far, a successful trade. Okay, one more, and then, and then I've got a jet. Uh, Visa. Visa. Visa is moving up nice. Again, you know, this is one of those charts where, you know, people say, geez, I wish I was in Visa. Say, say this breakout right here. We'll just use this breakout. So here we break out, and then you can see we're running uphill here. So the thing about it is go through, go, go through Visa, and you can see all the, the, the places that might have triggered worth a look anyway. So we pull back and you know, worth a look. There's some consolidation. There's some consolidation. Well, here we are consolidating again. Now I'm going to draw this a little longer out here. And I just want to make sure we get the trend in there. And if you, if you look at this, now kind of unfair to count this one and this one because that's where we started the trend with. But look at this one here. Look how we pulled right into trend. And buyers started stepping in. Or at least it, it, we started seeing a chart pattern that we look at pop out of the box here. So as this moves sideways, I certainly would look at this to the bullish side until it's no longer bullish. Where is that? Simple, down there. A little too much below that trend line. We don't want to play with that because from there it's going to have to work itself back up and create another you know, a low, high, higher, low scenario. Right now it's doing low, high, higher, low, higher, high, working right above that trend line. And as we get close to the trend line, now that wasn't necessarily close. I mean compared to here or here or here. Uh, but as we move sideways, watch for those buyers. I get it being a buyer here. I think that's a good plan. Just make sure that stop is in there. And then on a breakout, well, you know what? We're happy campers, aren't we? All righty. Folks, sorry, I've got to keep, keep this short. Uh, so uh, again, I want to thank everybody for being here. I appreciate it. Sorry I couldn't get to all of them. Um, just can't do that. Uh, so thank you. I hope to see everybody tomorrow morning in either the hit run candlesticks or right way options trading rooms. We'll see everybody tomorrow. Have a great night. Everyone, please take care.